Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, welcome to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. We're going to have an amazing show today. I've got a wonderful guest. She just flew in last night from Austin, Texas. Her name is Paige Davis, and I just flew in from Seattle last night. So I want to introduce you to a young woman who has something in common with me. We both have cancer. The difference is that this woman has written a book about how she worked th through her cancer with mindfulness. And I wish I could have done what she has done because she's absolutely amazing. So I'd like to int introduce you. Paige, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It is such a pleasure to have you here. I share something with you and I told you before that we even spoke, I'm gonna need some tissue hey. and Kleenex because I think you're gonna tell us a story. So tell us a little bit first about you. Tell us where you come from what and what you do. Yeah, so I was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, and went to college in Indiana University. Started my career in the Bay Area. This was at the height of the dot-com, the first one, um, mm -hmm. and worked for several different startups. And then after several years, just was ready for a change and made the logical step to move to Texas to open a Pilates studio, of a course. A Pilates studio, okay. <laughs> so I've second. always had an interest in health and wellness and spirituality, so I've kind of toggled in my career back and forth with that. And then after the Pilates studio, I realized I was more of an entrepreneur than a teacher, or um, more of an entrepreneur than a Pilates teacher, I just got burnt out on it and uh, started a company called Blue Avocado with my sister. Blue Avocado. Yeah, okay. with my sister and a good friend, and we create products that help people live a more reusable lifestyle. So reusable shopping bags, and um, our rezips are designed to replace plastic baggies. So yeah, we're in the container store, Target, Office Max, Office Depot. Now, aren't you aren't you the niece of Mark Davis? I am. And yes. Mark Davis was a guest on our show. Yeah. One of my very good friends. Unfortunately, he's one of my terrible tennis uh. partners at the same time. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so you're here visiting him. Exactly. And you've yeah. been so kind to agree to come on the show the oh, night after well, you got here. Oh, thank you for inviting me. This is terrific. really such a Just pleasure. Terrific. So we both share something, mm -hmm. and that we actually share two things. One, we both have cancer. Yeah. And two, uh, we were both diagnosed on holidays. Right? Yes. You were diagnosed on Valentine's Day, and yes. I was diagnosed on my birthday. Yes. So that's uh, amazing how that's something that we have done together. Mm -hmm. But we both had different ways of treating our cancer. Yes. So uh, I, I'll do mine first, and then we'll talk okay. about yours. Okay. So good. I decided not to go with. Um, the standard treatment of chemotherapy yeah. and uh, radiation and all that kind of stuff. And to be very honest with you, I just didn't want to put that in my body. Yeah. And I didn't want it to interfere with my lifestyle. Uh, knowing that uh, people who've had chemo and yeah. radiation, their life changed quite a bit for mm -hmm. a period of months, maybe for the rest of their lives. Right. And for me, I'm just too busy a person to want to change anything. So yeah. I looked at alternative treatments and I'm on a trial drug and so far so good. Uh, you know, I've great. been doing great. You look great. Thank you very <laughs> much. I wish that were absolutely true, but <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the compliment. You, on the other hand, took a totally different track. Yeah. Tell us about so it. So I tell people I was the healthiest person I knew till I got cancer. So a couple of things kind of influenced my the way I approach it. I had two aunts who I was very close with and witnessed their cancer journeys as well as my grandfather. And um, I just knew that for me it was really important to share my journey. So a couple of days after my diagnosis, I sent a email to my family saying I really wanted to treat this as a love journey versus a battle to be fought. So, a love journey? Yeah, so I think partly because I was diagnosed on Valentine's Day, but um, also just I, I wanted to stay away from terms like fight, battle, or poison, and not because I was naive to it, but I think witnessing the reality and frankly the brutality of what cancer can do, um, I needed to meet that through a more compassionate lens. So mindfulness and meditation and visualization and other alternative therapies really um, were so important, but I did, it was a true complementary approach, so I had a... So you did the chemo yeah, and, so I had and a the radiation? bilateral mastectomy, no radiation, six months of chemo, several reconstruction surgeries, wow. and a drug that I have to take for a total of 10 years, but um, 
Yeah, so it was, you know, an approach that I think was do it doesn't resonate for everyone, but even, you know, when it came to chemo, again, that was my biggest fear and the idea of putting poison in my body didn't mm -hmm. feel especially productive. Um, but I think because of my age, I was diagnosed at age 38, the doctors were really encouraging me. And so it was important to approach it from a different way. So I had a wonderful teacher who is also a therapist and a Zen Buddhist priest who helped me to create a custom visual visualization where I was able to see the chemo. Really, it's just a loving, friendly energy part of my healing team coming in, doing what it needed to do, and then leaving my body, visualizing myself recovering, being well, getting stronger. Wow. And it was a game changer. And as we said, we're discussing earlier, it's not for everyone, but as we know, there is no one size fits all when it comes to a cancer journey. So, you know, it's just important to be honest with what resonates for us, and that that worked for me. So, yeah. well, there's and it was. Let me be clear: yeah. it's the hardest thing oh, yes. I've been through, but also a very meaningful and transformational time. And chemo was. Um, I remember a friend telling me this, but it was ironically very nurturing. Um, just because you're, you have that quiet time, and everyone's kind of taking mm -hmm. care of you, and um, but it was definitely very difficult. But. I have to tell you two things. Number yeah. one, why do you look younger <laughs> after chemo and everything that you've gone that's through? That's the mindfulness that, meditation. Uh, that's the mindfulness. Okay. <laughs> so then everybody's going to jump on your yes, book. You exactly. realize that we're going to talk about that. Yeah. But you're right. If if that helped you go through the journey very yeah. well, I, I I appreciate something you said the time, the sanctuary that you have during the time frame when you're getting chemo. Yeah. We have a program called Make Him Smile, which uh -huh. is a music program where we bring musicians into the hospitals. Oh, wonderful. And one of, the, one of the places we go to is the Capulani Cancer Center mm -hmm. here. And this is where all the wi women, only women, get their chemo. Mm -hmm. And they sit there in their chairs, and we have ukulele players yeah. and guitar players and harmonica players yeah. and violin players coming to play for them for a couple hours, yeah. and they love it. Yeah. They love the idea that they've got something to help them take their mind off yeah. the chemo. What you have done, though, is you're taking the mind off chemo with mindfulness. Yeah. Tell us, how, how, how did you do that? So I've always dabbled in meditation and mindfulness really throughout my whole life. Um, I would describe myself as a crisis meditator, so never having a consistent practice. And about nine months before my diagnosis, I was just your stereotypical stressed out entrepreneur on the verge of burnout, really desperate for some peace in my life. and did what a lot of us, I think, do in those moments. I started Googling mm -hmm. <laughs> meditation, mindfulness, retreats, and landed on a meditation training with Deepak Chopra and the Chopra Center. And it was a game changer and really learned a lot of things that helped me to cultivate a practice that fit my lifestyle and helped to dispel a lot of the myths I had. So, Did you change your diet? I'm curious. Um, I didn't really. I mean, I cut out soy. My doctor recommended that. What but, about sugars? Um, um, I was always, I wasn't a real sugar person. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, it was more important to like eat the nourishing or the foods that tasted well, because I did lose quite a bit of weight. But mm -hmm. again, with chemo, there was a cadence to it. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of predict when the bad days are coming. So mm -hmm. on those days, I would you know, have the mashed potatoes, the mm -hmm. pot, whatever I could. Yeah. And on the days I was starting to get stronger, I would do the green juices, the salads, and really the things that I know my body was craving. Uh, you mentioned Deepak Chopra. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because I have a very good friend who actually works for a company that uh, Deepak uh, promotes. Oh, yeah. Which is Ruby out of, out of Vancouver, Canada. Oh, cool. And it's amazing how, how he has also changed his life yeah. using all of the different tools that you're that you're talking about here. Yeah. Well, and the, of course he's changed it going into a plant-based diet as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. The number one thing that I really learned through that training was that well, number one it's okay to have thoughts in meditation. So mm -hmm. it, that meditation is really about shifting our relationship to the thoughts, but also that when we're meditating it's like exercise for the brain and it's helping to soothe our nervous system. So, you know, I was experiencing some pretty immediate benefits after that training, sleeping better. While, while you were Yeah, while sleeping were better. Well, no, this was before my diagnosis, but it was literally the moment of my diagnosis after that initial breakdown mm -hmm. that I just, I was about to get the biopsy and literally just did the only thing I knew to do in that moment when so much was out of my control and just focusing on my breath. And 
I was just overcome with this sense of peacefulness throughout my entire being. And I was aware that I was having a potentially devastating moment in my life, but there was no denying the peacefulness that I was experiencing. And I was like, oh, this is why people meditate. Um, and it became really a tool throughout my journey that um, just allowed me, it provided a home base when so much was unknown and unpredictable. Um, wow. And yeah. Well, wow. I think the, the, the most important piece of this, the lesson that we learned from looking at you and your smile, uh -huh. is that you found a way to not just look at cancer as, oh my God, what's happening to me in my body, but you looked at it as a journey, as, yeah. as a way to improve yourself as well, yeah. even through cancer. I didn't do that, and I don't think 99% of the people do, and I think that's why I was so fascinated by your book. Yeah. It, it made me understand that whenever you look at a negative issue in your life, you can turn that into a positive issue. Yeah. You yeah. can take any anything that happens to you and if you look at it in today's world, rather than look at the future of what the negative part of what it can right. do, you can actually turn it into a positive, wonderful yeah. thing. Yeah. So tell us about the book. Can you pull it up for people? Yeah. To see? So um, it, this really started as a series of blog posts that I kept throughout my journey. So it really just is a healing outlet for me. And so the first draft of the book was. Um, my blog posts and then my personal reflections, and I shared it with some editor and publisher friends, and they said, we love it, but really encouraging me to turn it more into a narrative, so it, it read like it's a story. You. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I like How long to, did it take you to write? So I resisted it for a while, because I think I had this fear about being pigeonholed into the cancer narrative for the rest of my life, so, but obviously I got over it, because I realized this has never been just about cancer. It's been about um, growth and transformation and really resiliency at the end of the day. Um, so it really, once I focused and said I'm going to do it, really just took a month. I mean, it just kind of came pouring out of me. And I mean, I feel kind of selfish that I wrote it because it, it's for me, but, and I'm just thrilled that people are resonating with it. Um, and that, you know, people are open to different perspectives that I did change, you know, offer. But um, yeah, it's very much my story. I'm not necessarily Your telling people story. what to do, right. um, but it's certainly there's tangible things that you can take away throughout the book. So, wow, well, yeah. people are talking in my ear right now. I'm hearing people say, where, where can they get it? Yes, yeah, so you buy can it? get it on Amazon, um, and any local bookstore should have it. Is it or online they can as order. well, or is yeah. it strictly a hardcover book? Um, no, it's online, so it's you can online order on well. Amazon. So you can order it through Kindle and all that yep, kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a digital book too, and then also my website, which is hellopagedavis.com. So uh, maybe Robert could, couldn't get that up for us. Hello. Hellopagedavis.com. P-A-I-G-E-D-A-V-I-S. Okay. Dot, dot yeah. com. All yeah. right, good. So um, we have a little short break that we have to okay, take, and then great. we're going to continue and talk about the actual details of what you went through okay, and what you think can help people go forward. Okay, sounds good. I'm Seymour Kazimersky with a wonderful guest, Paige Davis, on Seymour's World at Think Tech Hawaii. We'll be back in a minute. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the uh, host of Cyber Underground, uh, every Friday here at 1 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then every episode is uploaded to the Cyber Underground, that library of shows that you can see of mine on youtube.com. And uh, I hope you'll join us here every Friday. We have some topical discussions about why security matters and what could scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you just try to watch my show all the way through. Hope to see you next time on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Hi, welcome back to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. My guest today, I hope you've been watching the last, has been Paige Davis. Paige is uh, from Austin, Texas, just flew in last night, 
and she's with us to discuss her book called Here We Grow, but more important is to discuss her journey with, with cancer and how she's working with it and what she's doing to help other people understand it. So Paige, as we get into this half, we only have yeah. a few more minutes left okay. to talk, unfortunately. Yeah. And I really want to talk through uh, the writing of the book and, and what went through you as you were writing the book. But people need to know where to get it again, because yes. I keep getting these calls in my ear. Yes. So Robert, if you could put that up again, if you could put up where to buy this book, that would be terrific. Uh, obviously, you said Amazon? Amazon, yep. And then my website, hellopagedavis.com. And there it is, right? So yeah. it's www, hello, good, perfect. Yeah. So, and we will get that up a couple of times okay, more so people perfect. can get it. Thank you. So tell me about the actual writing of the book. You said it poured out. How did it pour out? Was it emotional to write the book? It was emotional. And, you know, I think part of my own resistance is do I want to relive it? I know that was a concern for my family. Like, you know, when you make it through something, you kind of want to put it to bed. Yeah. But it just kept, um, it wasn't going away. So, um, yeah, once I committed to it, I just, yeah, it was a very emotional process. And for me, it was just like everything I do, it's very important to be mindful and spiritual. So, um, you know, I was amazed by the level of detail. So I had a whole ritual. I mean, I meditate every morning regardless, but had an additional ritual of really just getting focused before my writing. How and, do you do um, that? Well, my morning practice, I'm a big believer there's no one size fits all when it comes to practicing meditation. Mm -hmm. So just the way we learn in different ways, we'll meditate in different ways. So some people are more visual, some people are more um, auditory. So for me, it's a combination of breath awareness and body awareness. Um, I do, I was trained in a mantra technique, which is again, just another tool, which is a gentle repetition. Um, so for me, I do 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon, just in and silence. You still do it? Yeah, yeah, it's a, one of those non-negotiables in my life. And then for the actual writing process, I would just kind of do a visualization of just feeling the words come in with ease and flow, and um, yeah, and just kind of. You know, I do it. I, I I I actually meditate three days a week. But like you, there's not one for everybody. Yeah. And everybody asks me about it, but I do it in the hot tub. Oh, yeah. And I do it in the morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, yeah. usually before it's light, obviously. Yeah. And I find that the sound of the jets in, in yeah. you know, the motor exactly. and looking at the sunrise coming up mm -hmm. makes me just totally unfocus yeah. on the things that are bothering me for the day and what's going on with my family and the kids yeah. and yeah. You know, my business and all that kind of stuff. And I find it wonderful. Yeah. I come out of the hot tub after about 20 minutes, about the same amount of time, and I feel really ready to tackle, you know, what's, yeah. what's and coming And it is. It's life. that consistency that's key. Yeah. So for me, it was um, the way I kind of got into a daily practice is the days I didn't do it, I would feel off. Um, and so that's kind of what encouraged me. But it's interesting. It's not like people are like, well, how do I know if I'm getting the benefits? And it's, you don't get, you don't meditate to get good at meditation. Right. You meditate to get good at life. Right. So you'll start to notice, you know, you're more responsive versus reactive, feeling more connected and personal to yourself and to others. Um, for me, I noticed a real boost in my creativity and intuition. So. You know, it's it's measuring it on a different level, but yeah. again, if, I just like to think of meditation as daily exercise for the brain, yeah. um, and it doesn't matter the outcome. There's no such thing as a bad meditation. Um, so yeah, that's. Kind I, you of, know, for me, meditation when I when I get in and when I come out, I feel very different. Yeah. So when I go in into the hot tub and. It's a ritual, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Why? Yeah. Because I'm playing tennis or golf yeah. those other days. So uh, for me, it, 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 if I don't do it when I'm out of town, for instance, or when we have guests, uh, yeah. because when I go in, it's too early to bother our guests yeah. in the house, uh, I, I, I miss it. I yeah. really do miss it. I find that I love that period of time. Just that 20 minutes is yeah. really And I love when I have new clients. I teach in the corporate workplace, but also with individuals. I do some individual coaching. And it really, mindfulness yeah, and mindfulness and meditation. And it's really just tapping into that kind of stillness and presence that we all have inside. It's just mm -hmm. we get to kind of strip away all the kind of outside press pressures of our lives and just kind of it's that connection to, I mean, I'll call it the soul, but however mm -hmm. you wish to define that. Well, so. let, me, let me make something very clear. Yes. You're not married. 
No. Am I right? <laughs> Correct. And obviously, you are very busy with your business yeah. and with your mindfulness career, etc. Yeah. Who helps you? Um, I mean, I'm. This was another kind of blessing from my cancer journey. Is I just have an amazing support network of friends and family and colleagues, and so I feel actually very fulfilled and. Uh, in my life, and um, but I have a lot of support around me, and and that was a big part of it. Learning to receive that, I was one of these people before my diagnosis that thought I could do anything on my own, and literally my diagnosis just flipped that 180, and now wow. I'm like very collaborative and I'm very open to receiving help and support. What do you do in your spare time? Um, I I mean obviously. Anything kind of spiritual and mindfulness. I love doing retreats. I do a. I go to a retreat and on Molokai. Right. I, so that I've been going. You're going to do that while you're here. I'm not this year, oh. but I have the past three years. Um, but yeah, just spending time with friends and family. I've started baking recently, so wow. um, baking bread actually. But yeah, I mean, I think. So you're not gluten free no, or anything. No. I, I, I'm having somebody on the show actually who's oh, a gluten yeah. free baker who believes that that's the answer yeah. to. Yeah. I mean. I'll always lifestyle. choose that when the option's there, because I think it's probably better for you. But um, yeah, so, and obviously writing is just kind of my um, just passion, and you know, so always doing that. Even though you're a very passionate person, I mm -hmm. can tell, and you're very dedicated and driven and yeah. motivated, uh, there, there must have been key people in your life that helped you get through the journey, either before or during or even now, after. Yeah. Who? I mean, really, my family was amazing, both my immediate family, so my parents would come in for every treatment and really? met me for every surgery. My sisters were there literally every step of the way. Um, and my extended family, I think, again, it's, we all knew what it felt. For me, going into this, I knew what it felt like being on the other side of watching a loved one go through cancer, so it was really important for me to share that. Now, they may not have wanted mm -hmm, <laughs> all mm -hmm. the gritty details, yeah. but um, yeah, so it was really amazing, and all my cousins actually arranged to have um, flowers delivered weekly throughout my chemo journey. Wow. Um, so yeah, the love is, I just feel so fortunate to, and then in people, that's what people are commenting on the book. It's like, wow, your family. So wow, that's I feel amazing. very fortunate. You know, adversity yeah. uh, is a part of everybody's life. I don't care who you may be. Yeah. And this was a situation, obviously, when you had your cancer. What do you recommend to women how to face adversity in something like this? You know, it's interesting. This is, again, like one of those talking about resilience is n never something I've connected with. But as I've started doing more speaking around the book, I realize that's really the theme. And what I'm learning about resilience is it's not something that um, you have or don't have. It's a set of thoughts, actions, and behaviors that can be learned. So for me, it's really, it's goes back to like that self-care. And I'm a big believer that self-care is not indulgent. It's actually a fierce practice of nourishing our body, minds, and spirits. So whatever that is for you, if it's meditation, if it's going to the beach, if it's just whatever it is to take time to kind of nourish yourself so you can be there for others in a more meaningful way. Wow. That is absolutely amazing because it's so true. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I find, uh, and uh, I'm a business consultant by trade, yeah. and uh, we end up talking to people who are in conflict, and I do mediation and arbitration yeah. and, and all that stuff, and that's one of the things that I tell everybody. Yeah. It's, without knowing mindfulness in detail, yeah. and it's just something that those of us who deal with people in crisis yeah. a, a, a lot, we're able to help them get through it by mm -hmm. exactly those words, mm -hmm. by being able to realize that what you have is not the end of the world yeah. and that you can actually take something positive out of yeah. it, yeah. You know, which is even more important. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about um, what you enjoy doing in your spare time. I mean, obviously, we all have spare time. Yeah. And you can't always be mindful, right? Yeah. Are there things that you do that... You say, I wish I could do more of, or I wish that I could, I could I actually be more involved in? Yeah, I mean, definitely travel is mm -hmm. something I love to do, and this is why I've been coming to Hawaii since I was a kid, so I'd love to be spending more time here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> um, Are we talking about opening an office here in Hawaii? Well, gosh, that would be wonderful. Well, um, you, know, you know what you're doing professionally, we haven't even talked about that, we only have a few more minutes. Professionally, you do that, right? You yeah. actually work in a corporate basis 
Tell us about that. A yeah, bit. so I go into companies um, and teach them, and they're primarily I'll, I'll work with their teams to introduce mindfulness training. So really, in Austin, Texas. Yeah, well, I've done it all across the country, so I have kind of clients all over. But really, as a way um, to help with stress management, to help with communication, focus, productivity. Um, because, you know, we're living in stressful times and the workplace is a stressful environment. So really giving people tangible tools that they can incorporate into their everyday. So, you know, the, the line between work and that work-life balance isn't um, so stark, work but you stress, can start, right. yeah. If you, yeah. Could, if you can separate that a little exactly. bit, that would help a lot of people be yeah. much more productive in their business, which would allow employers to say, we can afford to pay for somebody like you Exactly. To come. And yeah. of course, because you have Mark Davis here, yes. he would finance the whole thing it's for you. Perfect. I mean, Mark, are you watching <laughs> this? We need you, Mark. We need you desperately because I want Paige to be here in Hawaii. <laughs> I think it would be terrific. Yeah. Paige, unfortunately, our show has come to oh, an end. thank you. And so I have much. to say goodbye to you, but I just appreciate so much that you're so open and you're telling us about everything that happened to you in your life over these past few yeah. years. And it's, um, you know, I've had cancer patients on here before because mm -hmm. I like to share what I have with people to right. show them that it's not the end of the world. You know, right. I, I find I'm a better person today than I was two years ago yeah, when I was diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. And I think uh, from what people will see and what you have done, uh, with your life is just remarkable. Yeah. So let's Thank repeat you. one more time. The book, if we could put it up again, it's Here We Grow. Yes. And it's available on at Amazon.com yeah. at HelloPageDavis.com. Yes. You got it. Yeah. Paige, thank you so thank much. Thank you for so much. Us. And to all of you out there, I hope you enjoy the show. I look forward to your comments and uh, I'll see you in a week. Aloha. <laughs>